behind them. When the Prophet ﷺ intercedes and Allah says, ask, and he says, my ummah, all of this is happening right there and then. Jahannam is brought. Allah descends. The angels are carrying the thrones. The books are spread above us. We know there are records. Angels are going to different people. Yeah, and it's, get, it's the court. The court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being set up now. Everything's about before our eyes, we're seeing all of this. Above us, we see books. Just before the books are brought, Allah says in the Quran, Suddenly, hellfire is brought. G means someone brings it. Right at that point, you see before you, everybody sees angels coming line by line. Hellfire is being dragged by other angels. Everyone can see it. It's coming. The first thing you do, as in the hadith, is that they hear it. They hear Jahannam coming. So first you don't see it, but it's coming. You hear it first. And when it comes close enough, the people see it. And in another hadith says, وَلَهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ It will have this terrible roar of breathing out and terrible roar of breathing in. A terrible roar that frightens and terrifies every being on the face of the earth. Allah says, that day when the Jahannam is brought, everybody remembers. But what will remembrance do for them? Some of them will say, يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي I wish I would have put forth more good deeds for my life. What does that mean? More good deeds for my life. Listen to the language. For my life. What life? The life is over. We've, we're dead. So why, why, why are the people saying, I wish I would have put more forward more good deeds لحياتي, for my life? Because that's when we will really know and understand those who didn't believe and those who had doubts. That day you will know that the life we were living here is not the life. The real life is where you're going to go next. The life is in Jannah. In Jannah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the life in hellfire. He doesn't even say it's a life. He says, he will not die in it, nor will he live. So there's no life and there's no death. What is it then? The life is in Jannah. So they will say, oh, I wish. I would, in other words, I could have done more for my good life, for, to, to enter Jannah and live a life. That's when they see Jahannam. Even among the good people, they will say, I wish I would have done more. Because when Jahannam is brought, the terror is so amazing, unbelievable, that everybody thinks they're doomed. Jahannam, you'll forget, you, you'll forget everything. The sight of Jahannam, the, the, the hearing, the, the sound of Jahannam is unbearable. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, the Sahih hadith as well, I look, فَإِذَا بِإِبْرَاهِيمْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Ibrahim alayhi salam, قَدْ جَثَى عَلَى رِكْبَتَيْهِ He has fallen onto his two knees and holds onto the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner we don't know when Jahannam is brought. Falls to the ground. Falls to the ground. Says, Rabbi Sallim Sallim. Oh my Lord, give us peace. It's like when you're begging someone, please have mercy. Oh my Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Oh my Lord, give us peace, give us peace. So what about the rest of us, poor beings? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us on that day. وَلَهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ It has a breathing outwards and inwards. This zafir and shahiq, why is it breathing this way? First of all, to terrify. And number two, it's hungry and viciously wanting to eat those who are criminals. And, um, and with this exhalation inhalation, it's producing uh, uh, words. Words as it's, you know, when a person breathes in and out and he's talking, talking out, he's talking inwards, he's taking breath in and out. That's how Jahannam is talking while it's breathing out and talking while it's breathing in, saying, where are the criminals? Where are the sinners? Where are the disobedient? Where are those who challenged Allah? Where are they? I'm hungry. 
In another hadith it says that when Jahannam is brought, it starts coming closer. And the eyes of the kuffar, of the disbelievers who refuse to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the heat of Jahannam, their eyes explode. The heat. In the hadith it states that when it's about a thousand years journey away from them, a thousand years journey away from them, the heat reaches the eyes and the eyes explode. However, for the believers, Allah subhanahu wa states again in an ayah, I'm saying again, meaning I'm reciting it again to you, about the believers, as for the believers, the angels grab them and they protect them and they calm them down. The calming down is happening at that moment. Angels running to believers, angels running to disbelievers, like that. Angels coming line by line. What are they, what are they here for? What's going on? They run to people. And you find some of them comforting and some of them uh, bringing bad news. Some of them giving good news, some of them giving bad news. And you see light emanating and darkness going less. And people start to see what's happening. Some hadith state that the color of Jahannam is not red, nor is it white. But black, although one hadith is weak about that, the other hadith strengthen it that its color is not red, it's a dark color. There's no light in there. And there are a hadith came in Bukhari and Muslim that 70,000 angels, 70,000, will be the ones pulling or, or bringing Jahannam on that day. Let me just remind you, when Prophet ﷺ intercedes and Allah says, ask, and he says, my ummah, all of this is happening right there and then. Jahannam is brought. Allah descends. The angels are carrying the thrones. The books are spread above us. We know there are records. Angels are going to different people. Yeah, and it's, get, it's a setup. The court, the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being set up now. Everything's, but before our eyes, we're seeing all of this. At that point, Every person says, I don't know my father or my mother or my wife or my husband or my children. I only know myself. I just want myself. I am ready not to give even one hasana away. I can't afford it. That's how terrifying it's going to be. 70,000 angels bring Jahannam. How do they bring them? How do they bring them? The hadith states that the 70,000 they hold Jahannam back. So they're grabbing it. Allah says in the Quran, when it sees them from a far distance, when it sees them from a far distance, as in the Quran, this is an ayah in the Quran, they hear a terrifying roar and a terrifying inhalation and exhalation. And then it begins to attack. It begins to wanting to attack like a vicious lion, a wild hungry lion, but Jahannam. And these 70,000 angels, did I say 70,000 angels? I meant 70,000 leashes, like ropes. On every rope, there are 70,000 angels. It has 70,000, you know, like ropes or leashes. We don't know what these ropes look like, but they're, they're like ropes that, that, that angels hold on to, to control Jahannam, like a beast. سَبْعُونَ أَلْفِ زِمَامٍ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ مَعَ كُلِّ زِمَامٍ حديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم مَعَ كُلِّ زِمَامٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ يَجُرُّونَ 70,000 angels on each rope carrying it along and in the hadith in another hadith they are controlling Jahannam so they so it doesn't so if, what, if they let go it will eat everyone so they, they pull it back that's 70,000 times 70,000. You calculate. 4 billion, 900 million angels. 
Don't ask me about their size. So what is the size of Jahannam? Size of Jahannam. We're going to talk about that in later classes to come, but because we just, we just want to try and sort of let you understand the reality of that moment before I go on. I'll just give you one hadith. The Prophet ﷺ was walking. This is Sahih Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. He was walking with his companions and then they heard a rumble, like, a, like an earthquake. Rumble. This rumble was strange. The Prophet ﷺ became pale and said to them, This is a stone thrown into Jahannam 70 years ago. Stone dropped into Jahannam 70 years ago. Now it reached the bottom and this is the rumble you hear. Don't ask me about the gravity in Jahannam. Don't ask me about the, the laws of physics and in Jahannam. I don't know. 70 years, according to our calculations on earth, the stone took to reach the bottom of Jahannam. Now, so if there was gravity from the moon to the earth and you dropped a stone, it wouldn't take 70 years. It will take much less than that. For a rocket from the moon to earth with thrusts, if there was a rocket from space with thrusts, how long does it take to reach the earth? So Allahu Alaihi 